Great is the Lord and greatly is the Lord to be praised. Uh, good morning uh, and greetings from First Baptist Church, North Tulsa. Uh, we're excited on today uh, to see what the Lord uh, has for us uh, by way of Bible study. We here uh, at our church, we endeavor uh, always in all that we do to uh, teach minds, change hearts, uh, and touch the world. Uh, and one of the ways we fulfill our commitment uh, as followers and believers of Jesus Christ when it comes to teaching minds uh, is a regular, consistent uh, study of the Word of God uh, through uh, our Bible study. Uh, the Bible says that we are not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, and we know the Word of God uh, is able to renew uh, not only our hearts, uh, but also uh, our minds. Uh, so I'm excited to see what the Lord has for us on today. Uh, I pray that you are excited uh, as well. Uh, I am going to uh, lead us in a study uh, through one of the most uh, pivotal, uh, maybe important chapters in the Bible, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, where Paul deals uh, in that entire chapter uh, with uh, the resurrection. Uh, I'm going to read for us uh, from that 15th chapter. Uh, just those last two verses that are quite familiar to many of us, uh, verses that are probably read uh, beginning or going back to verse 51, uh, primarily read uh, during funerals, but this chapter uh, deals with much more in the Christian life uh, than just comfort um, in our time of loss. And so I'm going to read verse 57, 58 of 1 Corinthians uh, 15, invite you uh, to follow along with me, take notes, uh, whether it be in your Bible, uh, whether you're using an electronic device or just a, a notepad. But follow along as I read verse 57 and 58 uh, from the very familiar King James Version. Paul, the apostle, says, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, some translations say immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. What we're going to talk about today and pray that the Holy Spirit is able to, uh, to drop into your spirit by way of encouragement is this Bible study topic, a winning cause, a winning cause cause. Uh, we know, uh, matter of fact, just on last night, uh, the Stanley Cup Finals end ended with the Las Vegas Knights uh, being the Stanley Cup champion. Uh, over the weekend, we uh, crowned a new uh, male and female French Open champions. Uh, the NBA Finals ended the other night with the Denver Nuggets capturing their first NBA title. Uh, all of their fans are certainly uh, in a frenzy uh, because we all want to be identified with a winning team and with a winning cause. But I want us to know as we celebrate earthly teams, whether they be teams or individuals uh, who have attained great heights of athletic achievement, that there, there is no sure win when it comes to athletic competition. We win some. We lose some. The champion this year may not necessarily be the champion next year. There is one sure win, and Paul helps us to know what that one sure win is in 1 Corinthians 15, and he ties it to the foundation of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. My, my beloved, we, we all want to be victorious. We want victorious living. We want victorious living, hopefully not just in this life, but also in the life come. And so Paul here uh, illustrates very, very well for us in 58 verses how victorious living both in this life and in the life to come uh, is foundational and is tied to our belief, the truth, and the fact of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, as stated, everyone wants to be on a winning team. In fact, 
There is probably nothing more disconcerting than to experience one loss after another. And for many of us in our life, uh, that's the way the ebb and flow of life is. It seems like we uh, have been experiencing maybe just one loss after another, one defeat after another, one di disappointment after another, one setback after another. It just seems like uh, the, the needle of our life seems to spin around and around on, on defeat, on negativity. As I observe uh, many uh, believers, uh, I find it very intriguing how it is that some, some believers who trust God have found the way through their faith in God to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. That, that there is nothing more amazing than possibly uh, to see a team that we are rooting for almost seem to have their backs against the wall. Crunch time, two minutes left. It seems like uh, they are ready to throw in the towel, need to hang it up, but somehow uh, they are able to muster up uh, the mental and the physical fortitude to literally uh, snatch, right, uh, snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. But then, on the other hand, there are those who lack the necessary faith and trust in God and find a way or manage to pull defeat from the jaws of victory. As, as believers, and I'm specifically talking to believers, because only when we have professed a, a belief in Jesus Christ, as Romans chapter 10 says, that we, we have confessed with our mouth and we firmly believe in our heart that God resurrected or raised Jesus from the grave, that, that, that saves us, but that belief in the resurrection also guarantees believers uh, what we would call a sure win or being identified with a winning team or with a winning cause. And so, uh, as believers, uh, based on our faith and our trust in God, we can either, right, snatch victory from the jaws of defeat, or, as many do because they lack faith, we can, we can find a way to pull defeat from the jaws of victory. A couple of illustrations, Old and New Testament. First, the Old Testament. In the Old Testament story of Caleb. Joshua and the 12 spies. You'll find this uh, uh, illustrated or narrated for us by Moses uh, in Numbers 13. Caleb, Joshua, 12 spies. Uh, we see a, an amazing and stark contrast between those who believe God for everything and those who expect too little from God. I, I wonder who you are uh, on this Wednesday morning. Are you someone who has great expectancy when it comes to things from God? Are you one uh, who has very little expectancy or expect too little from God. Uh, as, 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 as we notice uh, in Numbers 13, 10 out of the 12 whom were sent on the reconnaissance mission attempted to feel defeated in the face of a sure win. Uh, God simply said, go and spy and view out what I am going to give you. This is a promise uh, this is a guarantee, yet, yet in the face or in the midst of a promise, a sure win, a guarantee from God, uh, 10 came back feeling as if it was insurmountable, that there were giants in the land. Yes, uh, the fruit, the vegetation, the land was just as God said, but even though God said it, we just don't see how it's going to happen. Caleb and Joshua knew that defeat uh, was not an option, not an option, my friends, with God. In the New Testament, uh, after the crucifixion of Jesus, Luke records uh, in chapter 24, two disciples uh, on the road to Emmaus. We don't know their name. They were followers of Jesus Christ. They had come to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. They had heard about uh, Christ. Uh, but then while they were there for the Passover, uh, Jesus, uh, the one whom they believed to be the long-awaited uh, and anticipated Messiah, uh, suffered a, a very cruel death on Friday, had been buried, uh, placed in a grave, and no one knew what was going to happen next. These disciples on the road to Emmaus, 
They felt defeated. They felt that they had invested all of their life in what they thought would be a winning cause or a winning team, but their team had lost. But it was not until the appearance of the resurrected Christ that they came to realize that victory uh, had been taken from what seemed to be a very certain defeat because they were able to see the resurrected Christ. In fact, in 1 Corinthians 15, as Paul uh, helps us to understand how foundational uh, the resurrection is to, to our, our, our victorious living in this life and the life to come, he begins in the first few verses by establishing the fact that the resurrection is true and the resurrection is true because Christ made a number of appearances, right, uh, to his followers and to his disciples, two of them being uh, these disciples on the road to Emmaus. Uh, Paul then goes on to talk about how, listen, uh, if the resurrection be not factual, if it be not a literal bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, then guess what? Our faith he says, I think in verse 19, our, our preaching, uh, our ministry, uh, our lives, everything is in vain. My friends, it is all centered and tied to the factual, literal resurrection of Jesus Christ from the grave. My friends, in life, uh, it can often be difficult to embrace what God has for us. We are often guilty, as I said earlier, uh, of having very low expectations when it comes to God. When we encounter setback after setback, we become disillusioned, distracted, uh, and even begin the downward cycle of devaluing ourselves and also our lives. We ultimately arrive at a point where we regularly demonstrate a lack of belief in God. As a result, many Christians are not able to possess what God has granted access to because we have promoted our past into his promise. Allow me to say that again. Many of us are not able to experience what God has granted. We are not able to gain access to what God has for us because we have promoted our past into God's promise. Listen, uh, 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 on the street level, uh, we call that uh, carrying baggage. We take baggage from yesterday into tomorrow. But what we do on a spiritual level is the same thing. We promote uh, things from our past into God's promise for the future. And when we promote all of the negativity all of our disappointments, all of our setbacks, when we promote those things from the past into the future promises of God, my friends, we will never have access into what God has for us. We are reminded from the words of Scripture today that the cause of Christ is a winning cause. We are not and never will be on a sinking ship. Notice, Paul says in verse 57, but thanks be to God, who does what? Who gives us the victory. This victory is not something that we can merit, uh, that we can earn, that, that we even deserve. This victory is a gracious gift of God. Uh, it was earned by Christ. Uh, it was merited, right, by Christ. And Christ earned and merited, right, this victory over demons, death, and the grave in order that he might give, it says, this victory to us, right, through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, as a result, we see that word, therefore, therefore Paul uh, interjects uh, three adjectives, right, that, that, speak, that speak to our ability uh, to, to live uh, victoriously in this life and the life to come. Paul says, number one, uh, be steadfast, right? He said, be steadfast. But then he also says, be uh, unmovable or immovable. And then thirdly, he says, always abounding in uh, the work of the Lord. Now, uh, these first two, be steadfast and unmovable, it does uh, interject 
or imply, and it is true, that we will be faced with opposition, right? Uh, no athletic contest, uh, no victory uh, in an athletic arena is a legitimate victory uh, if you're just practicing against one another. What makes it a true victory uh, is when you are competing against an opposing team. In other words, you're going to expend some energy, right? Uh, you're going to experience uh, some successes and some failures. You're going to have to develop the, the ability uh, to, to work together as a team to overcome, right, uh, obstacles. And, and so Paul says in, uh, in this uh, ministry, in this work uh, that we do for the Lord, even living our own individual Christian lives, we've got to be steadfast, right? And the reason we can be steadfast is because we know that ultimately, uh, despite everything that we are going through, the victory is ours. And then he also says, be uh, immovable or unmovable. In other words, uh, we, we have to be, as it says in Psalm 1, like that tree that is firmly planted by the river water. What, what firmly plants us and keeps us uh, from being moved, right? Uh, it is when we are, are grounded securely uh, in the Word of God, when, when the Word of God uh, and, and when I trust in Jesus Christ and his resurrection, when they are uh, the anchor of our faith, it does not matter uh, how the winds may blow like they did uh, early this morning uh, here in Tulsa. Uh, the storm clouds were blowing. In fact, they were blowing so hard that tree limbs were, were all on the ground. Well, life is going to be like that sometimes. Storms are going to come. Winds are going to blow. But if we are anchored in the Lord, we can be assured that we will be immovable. But then Paul says that when we are steadfast, unmovable, he says we will always abound, right, in the work, Paul says, in the work we do for the Lord. So we are not and never will be on a sinking ship. We are people of the open tomb and great possibilities as we serve on the Lord's team. Realize he is the captain. He is the author and finisher of our faith. He is our coach, right? Beyond times of defeat, despair, depression, and despondency, there is a resurrection. Again, the resurrection is key and pivotal, pivotal to being on this winning team. Amid dark valleys and deep shadows, there is faith, hope, and love. For these and many other reasons, we can live with confidence that our life in Christ will be victorious. My friends, people live forward or backward according to their expectancies. God wants you and I to live forward, not live backward. Expectancy shape perception. Perception shapes behavior. Behavior either directs us toward or away from our destiny. Team with the perception that it is a losing team behaves and acts like a losing team. Given enough time, the team creates for itself the destiny of a losing season, or if we can say it this way, a culture of losing. And this not only applies to athletic uh, teams, and not only, but it also applies to corporate America. Uh, it implies even to our individual lives. It implies uh, applies even to uh, our church life, often we create a culture of losing when we are actually tied to the greatest victory there ever was. In fact, I inserted the only sure win and guaranteed victory, right, is our belief in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The blessings of being in Christ gives those who feel defeated a newfound expectancy, newfound perceptions, and newfound behaviors that will project them toward a destiny in the Lord. Christ, my friends, invites us to live as risen people. Christ invites us to new life. Christ invites us to live life at its best and at its fullest as we live life in him and for him. A winning cause is tied to the resurrection our faith, and our belief in Jesus Christ. Uh, the nugget, the seed that we give to you today, if you are already a follower of Jesus Christ, live 
know and act like you are on a winning team. If you are not a believer in Jesus Christ, this is your opportunity to join a winning team by simply confessing your belief in the victorious resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then you'll be tied to the one guarantee, the one sure win in life, and that is Jesus Christ, our Savior. My friends, that's what the Lord has for you and I on today. I pray that it has been a blessing not only to your mind and to your heart, but it also inspires you to live and to move uh, in a very victorious way. Not, not trusting in yourself, but trusting in the God who gave us the greatest victory of all through his son, Jesus Christ. Join us on next week as we continue to study on in the word of God, as we continue to teach minds, change hearts, and certainly we want to touch the world. God bless. Allow me to pray and close. Father in heaven, we thank you that through our Lord Jesus Christ and his great victory on the cross and resurrection from the grave, we are on his winning team. Help us, God, know that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But you've come that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Thank you, God, for giving us the victory. We know it remains a great mystery, but we trust God and have faith in your promise that, God, you are the guarantee of all that we have, both in this life and the life to come. God, we pray for those who are viewing Pray that you bless and enrich their lives as they have endeavored and made a commitment to study the word of God. May our faith be anchored in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.